Boy, something really interesting happened with this problem. And uh, I started working on video and I got some weird result and I decided to start over. And I still get a weird result, but I still get the answer. So let me show you what's going on. I want to solve this problem here. X cubed equals sine X. And um, now in order to, to solve this by Newton's myth, I first have to bring everything to one side and set it equal to zero. So I decided to subtract X cubed as sine x minus x cubed would equal to zero and I call that f of x. So we have to create a function which equals zero and solve for that function to get the roots. In the course of Newton's method we've got to take the derivative. So derivative of sine is cosine and then minus 3x squared and Newton's method is again it's the new value of x is the old value of x minus the function divided by its derivative. So I wrote all this out and I put parentheses around it. Okay, now, um, first thing to uh, think about is are you in the correct mode? Because if you're going to calculate using derivatives in trigonometry, you've got to be in radian mode. <laughs> so here's a, uh, my calculator, all calculators have uh, some kind of mode uh, button and uh, Mine is already set at radians, but a lot of calculators, your calculator may be at degrees and you'll have to use an arrow or something to get it over to radians and hit enter. So make sure you're in in radian mode. And again, why is that? Because when we came up with the derivative of the trig functions, um, it was assuming that we were in radians. You know, derivative of sine is cosine, it's wonderful. But if you're in degrees, certainly the derivative of sine is a lot more complicated. Something like, I'm going to guess, uh, 360 over pi times cosine. Um, so you get some kind of big, big number in front. Uh, and it's, you, know, you don't want to mess with that stuff. So we, we stick to radians in calculus, in trigonometry. And so first thing is make sure you're in radian mode if you're going to use your calculator in calculus. All right, now then, um, I also, again, reminder, I have x minus f of x over f prime of x. So each of these, for calculator purposes, I put in parentheses. If you don't put the parentheses here and, and divide this, uh, calculator is going to follow the order of operations, and you're just going to get a screwed, um, screwed up answer that way. All right, now, I, uh, when I first started this, I say, well, okay, well, what's x going to be? Because sine is between minus 1 and 1, x is um, going to be uh, between minus 1 and 1, because x cubed, how <laughs> should I say this? If you take a number between minus 1 and positive 1 and, and raise it to the third power, you'll get a number between minus 1 and 1. All right, so the root of the equation is somewhere, somewhere in between. Now, I, uh, I first punched in 0 0.5. I said, well, okay, I'm going to assume that there's a, suppose there's a positive answer to this. And I'm not sure there's a positive answer to this. But if there is, if x is positive, then x is going to be between 0 and 1, because sine would be between 0 and 1, which means x is between 0 and 1. All right, so... I start with 0 0.5. I'll show you what happens. It's, it's, it's very interesting. So, all right, so I'm going to uh, do 0 0.5, store into x, like that. Got that? All right. Now I've got to punch in that uh, Newton's method. So I'm going to do x minus left parentheses sine x minus x raised to the third, close parentheses, divided by left parentheses cosine x minus 3x squared, close parentheses. Okay, come into focus. Oh, come on, there you go. So, did I punch that correctly? I'll take another look, because I can't hear you. You have to talk louder. Okay, um, and then I'm going to hit store x at the end. Like that. Okay, so, uh, let me see. Sine x, x minus sine x, or x cubed, cosine x. I believe I got it right. So, when I hit equal, I get an interesting answer. Negative 2.27 something. Alright, so why is that so odd? Minus 2.27, um, 80800. 
uh, 926-202. Again, I'm, I'm using all the decimal places I have, and, and you may have fewer, so that's the way it goes. All right. Um, but wait a minute. We said x has to be between minus 1 and 1, didn't we? <laughs> and so, um, and this number clearly is. If that cannot possibly be an answer to that equation. And uh, so now what? Now what do you do? Well, it is possible. Newton's method is, if you, if you go on to say Wikipedia, look up Newton's method. Well, one thing you'll find is that it's also called the newton raphson method. I, I didn't never knew that. Uh, some obscure guy named Raphson took Newton's idea from 1671 that he didn't publish. But Newton did this for polynomials, and Raphson generalized it the way we do it. Um, but Newton gets most of the credit. But uh, he, he did that around probably 1700 or 1690s. And, um, but you, you find that uh, it's a rich subject, Newton's method. There's a lot to, lot to talk about and too much for me to do in these videos for a Calculus 1 class. But um, it's possible that the next one is just going to get larger and it's just going to soar off to infinity. That can happen with Newton's method. I say most of the time it won't, okay, but... And there's some other weird things that can happen that I'll, I'll, I'll point out at the end of this video. All right, so uh, I was a little stunned when I got this. I thought, oh, well, maybe I should start at negative 0.5. And then when I started at negative 0.5, I think I got pretty much the positive version of this. Then I, then I found out that this will still converge. So if I just say, well, I'll just use it. See what happens. <laughs> and um, so I'll repeat the calculation like we did before. And I get negative 1.59596679724. Now that looks encouraging. It's coming closer to the acceptable range. On the third go round, we get negative 1.196120663144. And I'll just keep going. And this is going to take longer than I anticipated. I thought this would come in fairly fast. 0 0.9972820002 point nine nine seven two eight two zero 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 two oh nine. Uh next time we get um, minus zero point nine three five zero six nine four one four five eight three. I'll do it again. And I know this gets a little tedious to write down. Negative zero point Nine two eight six nine one seven eight zero five five three. Yeah, it's possible to write a program on a calculator that will just zip through this and spit out an answer. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I, I might show you that. I might show you that later on. Um, all right, so do that again. Step seven minus zero point nine. Two eight six and nine two eight six two six three one five six zero oh, one. Looks like it's converging. Um, and it looks like I need another chart here. Step eight, and I get negative zero point nine two eight six two six three zero eight seven three two. Do it again. I'm going to do it until I... Oh, there it goes. Step 9. 0 0.9286263080732. Ah, it's done. Because these two are the same, that means we stop here. There's our answer. So correct to probably about 11 places. Or is it 12? 3, 6, 9, 12. Correct to 12 decimal places. X would be... Negative 0 0.92862630872. Okay, <laughs> pretty amazing, huh? Um, so, and that's in radians. Remember, that's in radians. It's not degrees. And uh, if you're looking for degrees, I suppose you could now convert it to degrees. But um, but we have to calculate it in radians to get that answer. So uh, so there you go. This um, yeah, most problems in a textbook. They're going to converge pretty, pretty rapidly, maybe two or three or four steps. And I've, I've managed to do two that take seven or eight steps to converge. 
And uh, but as you can see, it this, this is going to work on anything, uh, just about. And like I said, there are some some odd exceptions that you can encounter, but uh, for the most part, this works really great, really great. And uh, so, um, okie dokie. So I'll, I'm going to do a little bit more, and then we'll we'll wrap up this uh, Newton's method stuff.